You can't be an emotional mess and be a spiritual success. <laughs> you can't. Actually going into a brand new month. We are in the month of March and our focus is going to be dealing with anxiety. And yeah, I know there's a lot to talk about with that. And we can go in a lot of different veins and a lot of different directions. But our goal today is to talk about controlling your emotions. Controlling your emotions. Now, I'm going to hesitate for a minute because I want people to understand that in the total man, there is the emotional, there's the spiritual, there's the mental, there's the relational, there's the social, there's all these that make up who you are, okay? And it's not just one specific place. So if one specific place is out of control, that means you have what I call an imbalance. So if your emotions are out of control, you have an imbalance that is impacting you mentally, spiritually, relationally, and socially. Come on, somebody. When you walk up to somebody who is emotionally going through frustration, irritation, and aggravation, do you want to be around them? Do you feel like you want to kick it and have a good time? No, typically you're walking around like maybe it's not a good time. Maybe I need to come back at a different time because it affects every other part of life. So we've got to understand something about emotions, okay? Because right now in the world, there is a increase of emotional instability. Right now, there is an increase of emotional instability. In fact, this culture right now, from the ages of 14 to around 30 are dealing with emotional intensity and emotional instability. And many people are trying to figure out why. There are long lines of people waiting to be served by some counselor or some psychiatrist to deal with my depression, to deal with my anxiety, to deal with my emotional upheaval. And I want to show you from the Bible and that God wanted us to have emotional stability, that it is not a common way to live emotionally where we seem to be always unstable and always in a place where it looks like I'm rocking and rolling. I call it a roller coaster, okay? If you are on a roller coaster ride with your emotions, you have a lot of emotionalism and sensationalism. You're up, you're down, you're excited, you're sad, you're this, you're that. Every day you're going through that and there is no real equilibrium we got to talk about that because God wanted you to have what the Bible calls self-control in Galatians when he gives the fruit of the spirit. Self-control means that I have control over me. And part of what you have in self-control is control over your emotions. Amen, somebody. So I'm going to just share some scripture and I want you to look at it through the lenses of emotions and understand that God wants us to have control over our emotions. The first passage I'm going to look at is in Matthew chapter 11 and verse 28. And this is Jesus himself speaking. And he says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. I want you to think about that. Yeah. When you labor and are heavy laden, that deals with some emotion. You know, you feel depressed, you feel downtrodden, you feel overwhelmed, you feel heavy, you feel like you've lost something, you feel depressed. He says, come to me all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you something. He said, I will give you rest unto your souls. You have to understand something about soul life. 
Soul life, the word soul, is actually the word in Greek, psyche. And psyche deals with the study of psychology, which we know deals with the mind. So let's just get real for a minute, okay? When you are emotionally acting out, you actually have thought that out. Emotions are not coming from anywhere else but your mind. Okay, the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Your emotions, whether it's rage, whether it's anger, whether it's sadness, whether it's depression, whether it's feeling overwhelmed, whether it's frustration, all of that comes from your mind. It comes from your mind. Emotions are a byproduct of your mind. Jesus says, if you come to me, I will give you rest unto your souls. In other words, this word soul means the seed of your emotions. God and Jesus wants our souls to be under control. Soul control. It's amazing to me that there are a lot of people who claim to be spiritual, but they are really all over the map emotionally. They say that I am spiritually sound, but they live as if they are emotionally unsound or emotionally unhealthy. And that's not the way God created us. God created us that if you are emotionally mature, you are spiritually mature. You can't be an emotional mess and be a spiritual success. (laughs) You can't. It's impossible because part of the benefits of being spiritually mature is you're going to be emotionally mature. Now, you may be thinking about now, how does that fit? Well, let's go over to the book of Galatians. We're going to go to Galatians chapter 5, and we're going to read a little bit here about what the Bible calls the fruit of the Spirit. But before we get there, we're going to look at some things that he called the works of the flesh. And it's going to be very interesting that some of those things that he illustrates as the works of the flesh show emotional instability. Amen. Emotional instability. So in verse 19, the Bible says, now the works of the flesh are evident, which are idolatry, fornication. I wish I had more time to go into that because fornication actually begins with stimulation. Look out now. Fornication begins with stimulation and sensualization. So you're being sensualized. That's an emotion, folks. Okay? You don't just jump in the bed with somebody and your clothes is off. That's something that virtually your emotions are being massaged by your mind at the same time. And you begin to transition to a place where now you are in fornication. Ah, but let me move on. The Bible says, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness. Lewdness means I'm just a mess. You know, I have no control over my actions, over my impulses, over what I say, what I do. I don't care. You can take it any kind of way you want to take it. It doesn't matter. It's me. Learn to live with me. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs that a fool that vents all his feelings or a person that vents all his feelings is a fool. Listen to that. A person that vents all his feelings is a fool. In other words, God wants you to realize that when you let it all out, I'm just going to tell him everything. I don't care. I'm just going to share everything. Whether you realize it or not, that's a foolish demonstration. That's not a wise demonstration. Wisdom knows how to assimilate information. Listen to me now. Wisdom knows how to assimilate information and emotional control knows how to assimilate emotions. Ah, emotional control knows how to assimilate emotions. Now it goes on to say hatred. You know, hatred is an emotion. Amen. You don't just one day wake up hating somebody. That is over a period of time. It started out as one thing and now it's a whole different thing but it was initially an emotion. 
Now it's taking over your mind. I hope you guys are getting this because we've got to get to a place where we control our emotions. Then it goes on to say contention. That's fighting. So I got a problem with you. Okay. If I got a problem with somebody, it's not just a problem with that person. It's a problem with me because now I'm demonstrating an emotion. You know, most fights virtually are not the kind of fights that virtually are just, you know, something that we're just kind of having a disagreement about. No, no, no. This is, this is division. This is friction. This is aggravation. This is pain. This is all of that. Okay. And so then it goes on to say outbursts of wrath An outburst of wrath An outburst means it couldn't be controlled. It couldn't be controlled. Amen. So what we're going to do, because my time has come to a point of closure, we're going to get back with controlling your emotions with part two and get to see what God has to share more as we relate to controlling our emotions. 